Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Today I am very excited to be reporting live from one of my most favorite places in the whole world, which is the waterfall here on Copenhagen. Um I feel like the nature is just nourishing and recharging me while I transmit this to you. So I'm excited for you to get this vibration because it's like I'm just so happy here so like whatever I do here I'm just putting that vibration into everything so as I do with all of my podcasts I invite you well, not all of them why did I say that <laughs> when the ones I remember to do this um I invite you to take a deep breath with me so breathe in through your stomach expand your stomach and all the way up to the top of your head and at the top hold it for a second and then let it out and come into awareness of the sensations that are happening in your body and whatever you notice just send it lots of love and acceptance and welcome to this episode. So today we're going to talk about, I, I'm very excited to share with you like a series of episodes that are coming up. And um, in order for me to share some of this information, I have to <laughs> give you like the foundation of how I view reality. So this is, this is where we're at. Um, and for me, once I got on this bandwagon of viewing reality in this way, everything opened up for me like everything started click 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 click. like all the things that I had listened to I feel like my voice just glitched listen to everything that I had listened to with prior like I've researched many different religions um I call it the universal message which is basically what is happening in the universe coming through many different teachers plant medicines everything and they're all trying to get you to the same understanding So for me, this is how I view reality and this is what I feel like is the structure of reality. And in order to download to you the next information that I'm going to in the next episode, I have to give you this first because if you don't understand this, then a lot of what I say is not going to transform your life as much as it could. So what how how is how do we view reality like what does that even mean um well the i think the question that really people are asking is why am i here and what am i meant to do on this timeline i feel like those are the two like real questions that people have like yeah we can talk about the structure of how the universe works but how does this actually apply to me so this is what we're really asking and to answer that i believe that our souls came here to come down. I believe that we are, first off, in spirit right now. So our souls, the bigger part of ourselves, is in the spirit world. So what is the spirit world? Spirit world is whatever is non-physical. And things that, the physical world has actually been deemed anything that deteriorates. So as you can see, everything around us slowly deteriorates and fades away. The spirit world is forever and it's non-material, right? So there's there's no um, density to it. And in order for us to understand why we are here, we have to understand that we are actually, our souls are forever, they are eternal they will never die. So we are actually in spirit right now and a part of us is focusing down into this timeline to choosing to have a temporary physical experience in order to grow our consciousness in some way. In order uh, for us as a unique soul within the timeline of all the things that are happening in the universe can grow itself into the bigger part of who it wants to become we have chosen to come down here and have a physical temporary experience and also forget that we are everlasting immortal on a soul level 
So for many people, that's like, what? You know, because, uh, you know, my religion that I was raised with was like, there's, oh, I don't want to go into what my religion teaches, but it's it's not that, right? It's like that our souls is, you know, it's, we are, it, our soul is in the balance of like our eternal salvation and we need to be careful what we do in this timeline because there's karma that's going to come and whether we go to heaven or not or we or my religion teaches like having a uh, paradise on earth after after we die but like a lot of our teachings and religion and different spiritual teachings is about whatever you do in this timeline matters so much because it is your eternal <laughs> either salvation or damnation afterwards as in like you are going to be judged for what you do in this timeline you know before you and so it's everything's like become so important and people get really stressed out and they're they're just like trying to figure out how to survive and actually like live in this world and then also if they do think about what happens to us when we die and they do think about the bigger picture it usually comes with a lot of fear of like I don't actually understand what happens or I'm going to cling to this one belief, but that belief actually puts me into a box of closing myself off to, it's disempowering. What I find most religions and most spiritual practices, if there's some dogma behind it, which is like some sort of structure based on rules and hierarchy within something that man has made, it usually becomes disempowering. Um, this is a very blanket term and also we can take whatever we want and make it empowering right so that's what I've done I've like really researched a lot of the what I call the universal message and I find truth in most religions truth in most spiritual practices and the thing that I do is I just take what I need to empower myself and I leave the rest so if we are just play this out with me if we are spiritual souls like this everlasting non-destructible soul that is choosing to have a temporary physical experience on this timeline why are we here like what are we doing so i shared that i believe that we are here to grow our consciousness in some way well what does like what does that mean so i view it as like a video game so i didn't play i wasn't really allowed to play video games growing up uh, my boyfriend Faraday played something called World of Warcraft and I've also I think there's a couple more that are like this um, where you basically pick your character you pick what they look like um, how they gonna, they're going to show up in the game so like in World of Warcraft like are they a shapeshifter are they a magician you know you pick like basically their theme of life and then you can also pick like where they get dropped off in the game so like where do they start in the game and I think also you can like you know, give them whatever resources you want to start with. And um, I found it interesting because Faraday was saying that like in the beginning when he was playing World of Warcraft, this video game, um, he would start at the beginning and like, you know, play it out. And then after a while, after some um after some time, he he tried cheating the game where he like went and like paid to be able to cut some of the levels. And he said that when he did that, it was not what he expected at all. He felt so disappointed because he slayed the dragon, but it's because he cheated and he like just jumped ahead and he didn't have any of that satisfaction for and the growth that comes from playing out the timeline of the of the game and going through all the levels and like you know all the missions and all the the things that you like the resources you get the people you meet all the adventures that you have right so this is kind of how we are as souls so like our higher self I call our higher self is the bigger part of our soul that is not able to be contained in this physical body and the awareness that we have so our higher self, you can call it your higher mind, your soul, whatever you want to call it. So this is the unique part of you that is in spirit, like the bigger part of you. And some people kind of like to call this also like the the parent and like we are the child having this experience because they are fully aware of what's happening the whole time. They're looking out for us. They're protecting us. And we're just kind of the kid who's like learning a lot along the way and figuring it out as we go. Um, so... Our higher self, before we came into this timeline, it knowingly chose to 
give us par- certain parents, have us be born in certain ethnicity, the way we look, where we're born, where we want to be placed in the timeline, because time is not linear. It's actually happening all at once. So like you can also jump timelines of like being your soul being born in this this time period and then going back over here and getting born in this time period and then jumping forward. There's so many things that can happen. And it's really fun because then you pop out and you're like, okay, so I was born to these parents and in this situation and your soul, it, they basically give you the timeline and the themes through the way that you're, you're, you pop out into the timeline. Like what situation are you born into? Your parents, um, where you're born and what time, what century you're born into. And then you get to play the game. You get to have the adventures on that timeline as you live out your life and as you follow what brings you joy you get to grow your consciousness you your soul is like i want to like for instance for me like there's a whole other episode i'll go into this but um like with my parents like i was born into the specific religion with this specific father and mother and sisters uh you know in northern california during this time period and my soul was able to grow and transform so much darkness into light because I chose to focus myself into this physical body for this timeline. And then also because I chose to forget that I am this eternal thing and so much bigger. Because as you're waking up to this reality, this time period before when you don't know all of this to when you know, this is what they call waking up spiritually, is actually some of the juiciest times in the sense, it's all in perspective, right? But if you really want to look at it, like so many people, myself included, I felt like I was suffering, you know, because I, well, I was born into this timeline pretty awake. Like I didn't, or as they say with a lot of kids today, is that they choose to forget less. Like they come in more connected to their higher self, more connected to their souls, And so it's less about waking up and more about choosing to remember more when you come in. And for me, I've always known, I've always intuitively known so much more than my conscious awareness like could process and also was like could validate because I'm like, I don't know where I got this information. No one around me is confirming that this is true. Um, So for a lot of my childhood, I was very confused and I was also just so sensitive and so heart open that I spent a lot of time in my timeline in pain. And because I was in pain, I chose to transform that pain and that darkness. I call it like darkness as in darker energy into light, into things that were beautiful and into things that grew my consciousness And I really feel that when you don't know what's up and you're like, you're just in those, especially those like darker moments is really when you as a soul, as a, you know, as a eternal soul, you choose who you want to be on the timeline. Because when you realize, when you wake up and you realize that it is all a video game, like we literally are dreaming when we're awake. And even when we die, on this timeline, we're actually just waking up into the bigger reality that we are eternal souls and we'll be in spirit. And then if we choose to, we can just come right back down. Like it's less of a big deal than our physical mind. Our physical mind is here to keep us alive and, and protect us. And so our physical mind is making it a very big deal. This is what a healthy ego is. Like we should have a healthy ego. It's here to keep us grounded in this reality, keep us alive, keep us moving in the game. But when we start worrying too much about what happens after death or like we don't know what's up, then it can start that ego, that physical mind can start controlling our lives. And this is when you start being guided by fear instead of what the the energy that is making up the whole universe which is unconditional love so when you wake up to the reality of we are these beautiful eternal souls having a temporary physical experience and that all of consciousness which is everything in this universe is here to guide and support us and that we are loved 
just for being ourselves and just for existing in the timeline. Like nothing would be here unless it meant something. Like we are, we matter because we exist. We matter because we are souls. Like that question of whether we're good enough, whether we're worthy to be on this timeline, that's already answered before we even got here. And so when you realize that, you're like, whoa, it really is all just love. And we're just here figuring it out, you know, and our, and then there's a bigger reality of our timeline where we, as a human species, decided to explore for a great many thousands of years, the idea of darkness, because we had been in so much light for so many, so much time. And now we are coming out of that. We're coming out of this 13,000 year cycle of darkness into light, into remembering consciously. And it's happening very quickly. You see people who are like, you know, like I had an ex-boyfriend who was like, yeah, I woke up to the reality of existence. I was just washing the dishes and like, <laughs> and, then, and then everything just clicked. And I just remembered who I was on like past timelines and I knew what I need to do here. And I just, and then it was just like, everything's great. Everything's just love, you know? So, Sometimes our physical mind doesn't want us to allow this in because it's like it's still trying to protect us. And this is beautiful. So we only have beliefs, what we call negative beliefs, beliefs that are not serving us. We only keep those when we believe that something worse is out there. So our physical mind is protecting us from what it fears is worse than believing this thing. So for me, like something that has been really beautiful lately, like I've known this for a long time, this, this structure of reality, but there's levels to that shit, right? Like, and also I'm on, I don't take psychedelics anymore. I can't even smoke weed anymore because it just puts me into what I call template reality or the constant field. And I'm just, I am, my, my consciousness is in spirit and then all I'm trying to do in that moment is keep myself grounded in this physical reality. So I'm like at that level where I'm just like, this is a lot, you know, like holding this much consciousness, allowing it to go through your body. This is a full-time job. <laughs> I say that jokingly uh, because I'm so grateful to be here and to have this awareness and be able to enjoy, enjoy the timeline as it is, you know. And with that, you, you start to realize that it doesn't, nothing matters in the sense that everything's good in the end. And also everything matters because we get to choose what matters. We get to choose what happens in our timeline. We get to create our reality. And also that we are not victims to circumstance. Like I spent so much of my life being like, why did, the, why was I born into this family where I always felt like an alien, where I always felt like I do not belong here. Like I have got to be adopted into this family. And I look like, I look like my family. Uh, I don't look like my immediate family, but I look like my aunt. And uh, she also was like an alien in the family. Um, but I never felt like I belonged and I was always wondering like, why am I here? And I felt, yeah, I felt like tortured. Like <laughs> everyone else in my family seems to be a-okay with the situation to the point where like my sisters do not believe that my dad was abusive. They think it was fine how he treated us growing up. Like they literally live in a different reality, even when we're in the same room. And so there was a big part of me that was like, why, why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to be sexually molested? Why did I have to be born into a cult? Why, 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 you know, like all I want is to be happy and to enjoy my life and to create beautiful things in the world. And then I started to wake up more to this and I realized that my higher self chose this and it's beautiful because I understand who I am so much more because of how I responded to those situations. For instance, if I was born in a middle to upper class, you know, American white family in the suburbs, and I had like a very normal life, normal by today's standards, with a supportive, loving family, 
that's great. Like for most of my life, I wish I had that, right? But I wouldn't know the depths of who I am and my soul and what I stand for and what I care about in the world in the same way that I do now. That would just be a different timeline where I cared about other things. But in this one, this in this timeline, Brittany Bond is fucking fierce. She supports and empowers everyone around her as much as she can, especially women. And she understands what it's like to transform darkness into light, to go through some of the most traumatic things that a person can go through and not kill herself and instead choose to be the speaking of light for the world that if I can go through this and I can choose to thrive in my life, then you can go through anything and I'm here with you the whole way rooting you on, you know? And to me, that's actually really beautiful. And so if you start looking at your story like this, as if you're writing this really epic movie or writing a video game of what adventures would you have you as the main character go on? And why would you choose to have yourself born to certain parents and in a certain environment, this, you know, in a certain spot on the timeline? And when you start doing this, you start working more closely with your higher self. And to me, that is so much fun because then life stops happening to you and it starts happening for you and through you. So what does that mean? I mean, think about how many times you've probably said in your life, like, why is this happening to me? Oh, this is such a terrible situation or I'm so stressed out right now. Da, da, da. I have done this many times. And now I look at something and I'm like, okay, how is this playing out in the timeline? I kind of like take a step back and I'm like, why are the neighbors freaking out? Like, what does my higher self want me to do right now? Because there's so much noise and I cannot make a podcast. I cannot function as a human in this environment. And then I sit there and I meditate with it. And I'm like, how can I transform this situation into something where I learn something about myself and where... I I choose to become more fully myself and I choose to transform it through my beliefs, through the perspective of how I'm looking at situation into something positive. And when you do this, you start, you start working with your soul, your higher self more closely. And it's what I call, <laughs> it's what I call, um, moving from victim mode into the main character of your life mode, which I love to call God mode. Because when you're doing this, you're literally what we a lot of us view God as like God is here to, uh, you know, guide our life in a certain direction. And when something happens, okay, God meant to have this happen and da da da. And then you start realizing, oh, this is me. I'm creating this timeline. I am guiding it you know, my higher self, the higher version of my soul that has more awareness of and has planned out the theme and the general course of my life. And then I, as the physical mind, get to choose the specifics and I get to choose whether it's a pleasurable situation and I enjoy it or, okay, I really want to take this lesson and make it, l drag it out, <laughs> make it be very painful. So we get to choose how we go through this and when you wake up to how it's all working you can you can fuck with it in a beautiful way you can make it start working for you and happening through you because when you think about it our souls the main goal is that they want to grow their consciousness like they I remember on one my first dmt trip the biggest download i ever got was that consciousness does not look at pain and suffering in the same way that we as our physical mind do. I literally could feel on an embodiment level how consciousness wants to grow. It's just like always wanting to grow. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't f look at pain and suffering in the same that way that we do. It's like, what is the quickest route to grow for this specific person? And what, in what way will they let me take them in this journey, in this direction, the fastest? And for most people, they have the programming that you have to have pain before you have gain. So they have this programming that in order to grow, they have to go through something painful. 
And so our soul is like, okay, this is a belief system that you've chosen to, you know, jump on the bandwagon of. And so if this is how you're going to grow your consciousness, I guess we're going to put you through some pain. It, it loves you and wants to protect you as much as possible. But it's like, okay, you're, this is the only framework you're letting me work with. So let's try and make it as painless as possible. But consciousness is like, let's just grow. Like, let's just keep evolving. And when I got this, I was like, ooh, I'm not a victim. I'm just not playing the game very well. <laughs> like in order to play the game in a way that feels better for me in, in my physical body, for me as a physical, my physical mind and the way that it processes all of this, I need to start playing the game of life better. And one of the best ways that you can do this is to start looking at everything is happening for you. Everything is happening for you. And no matter what is happening, you get to choose, you get to transform it into something that is happening for you. If you change your perspective and you ask yourself, how can I get something positive out of the situation? It doesn't matter how negative the situation is. How can I get something positive? What can I get? What can I learn that is positive out of the situation? And then you also can look at your belief system and change your belief system that you can grow your consciousness through pleasure faster and better and more efficiently and just more fun through pleasure and joy and following your highest excitement and all the beautiful things. Once you change that core belief system that you can grow and you can follow through on the theme that your soul has made for you in this timeline through fun and pleasure and things that feel positive in your body, everything will start transforming in your life so quickly. So, so quickly because it comes from this core belief that we are so programmed in this world to the point where even just yesterday I realized from an embodiment level that I was still acting out this thing around pain equals growth and this is so ingrained in us as it doesn't matter what culture you come from this is so ingrained in us worldwide because it, and it keeps being reinforced through social media through the way that the matrix is set up like the, how the whole structure of our 3d reality and like mainstream society is set up that people think you have to suffer in order to get what you need in your life in order to get what you want in your life and I do not agree with this and I am a soul which is a living pro living proof that you can follow whatever brings you joy and you can thrive and you can have all of the abundance that you want and live the most beautiful life like I live I have based my life in Thailand for almost nine years now I have lived in some of the most beautiful villas. I live on a tropical island with my dog and my boyfriend. I host play parties, sex parties. I have a community space where we've hosted hundreds of events for the community. I do impact in the community and I have financial abundance and I have all the other types of abundance, soul, family, nature, abundance, all the things that make me, my soul thrive, all the things that I need for myself, I have here in every moment and I'll share with you something yesterday where I didn't even realize that I was still on a programming level on a belief system level following this thing that pain equals gain where another way that this is this is why I'm saying there's levels to that shit because like our belief system we can feel like we've uncovered like the core belief that a lot of them are stacked on and then you just realize that sometimes it gets transformed and it's worded something different but it's the exact same belief and I have let go of the belief that it has to be painful to grow our consciousness in order to thrive that we have to go through a lot of pain I don't agree with that anymore and that's I think that's stupid so that belief is gone once you realize it's stupid you don't agree with it you don't need to do any more work it's already gone and then yesterday I realized that I kept trying to program myself uh, in the past I had this program that productivity is the most important thing and I I think that's dumb, but that's like what, you know, America is based on. That's what a lot of societies is based on. It's like, how much can you get done in one day? How productive can you be? How much money can you make? It's like this, you know, this constant like 
it's I like click, 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 click. I just think of like a time stamp, you know, like when you back in the day when you would check in for work, you would just click in your time card and it'd be like, and I just imagine that just going continuously throughout the day of just looking at the clock and how much can I get done and before I have to clock out and blah, 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 all these things. And so I kept trying to transform this belief and I would tell myself, okay, play is the most productive thing I can do. And then yesterday I was like, I don't want productivity to be a measurement of am I living my life in the way that I want to. Like I want productivity to not be on the measuring pole at all. Like fuck that. That can just get thrown out the window. And then I was like, well, how do I measure whether I feel quote unquote successful in my life? Like how do I know if I'm living my most epic timeline? And I was telling myself, well, it's my joy, you know? And then of course your physical mind comes in and it's like, well, how do you make know that you're going to have enough money? And it doesn't matter how much money you have. It's the physical mind always wants to make sure that it's safe and it's never feels safe. And so you have to not let it run the show. That's really the answer. And of course there's baselines of like security that you need to meet with for, for your physical mind. Like maybe for instance, it's having a certain amount of money in the bank or certain savings or whatever, whatever. But I will tell you from living in Thailand for almost nine years that a lot of those things are imprinted from us in the outside world. It's like external things of what they think success means and what security means. And a lot of those things you don't actually need. Um, but it keeps you in the rat race. It keeps you in the matrix. It keeps you, we used to call it gold, golden handcuffs when I worked in my law firm because you hated working there, but it paid so well that you were wearing golden handcuffs chained to your desk and you just kept working. And I, I was like, no, fuck that. I don't want to live like that anymore, you know? And so yesterday when I realized this belief that productivity, I was viewing productivity as the most important thing, I just threw that one out the window and I was like, I choose to believe that me following my joy will get me everything I want in my life. Joy, uh, well, joy, obviously, abundance, money, uh, tribe, you know, connection, creative expression. And I was like, okay, so this is like, no matter what is happening. And I realized what I was doing was, I would look at something external, like for instance, our neighbors have been really crazy uh, and it escalated a lot last week where we had confrontation with them. I had to go like make a report with the government office, like lots of things. And I would view that, okay, look at the situation that's happening externally. And I'd be like, this is the reason why I can't follow my joy. This is the reason why I need to just be productive and keep doing, like basically keep to this old belief system that productivity is the most important thing or that, you know, so being in survival mode basically uh, was the most important thing because see, there's keeps being situations. But then if you choose that belief, there will always be something externally that validates that. And so now I'm like, if I already had this really good thing, he's like, let's not give the neighbors any more of our energy. Like literally let's act like they do not exist. And we just focus our energy inside. We can close the doors, put the AC on if we need to, but we are not giving them any more of our energy because whatever you focus on amplifies. And we are going to focus our energy on what brings us joy. And I was like, I really like that. I agree with that. Yeah, I want to do that. And so I have been doing that. Like I li- I don't ever look at them. I don't, I when I, the noise happens, I just put my headphones on or, you know, I leave so that I'm not affected by it. We come to the waterfall so we can do whatever we need to do while the universe, our higher self, figures out how to. And and also it's full trust knowing that the universe is going to figure it out. Whether we get, we're even thinking now that we're going to get another place and have that be like our home base. Like we just get a simple house nearby um, because where we're living now is our my community space. And I've I've always had my own house outside of that. And that's always been the hub for the community. And recently we came back from Europe and we moved into it because we wanted to remodel it, put our energy into it, our love. And I'm definitely viewing it as a sign that the universe is like, be more abundant, get another place. And you can always still use this as the community space. And so when I released 
this viewpoint that, okay, something externally is proving that I have to focus on survival mode and focus on productivity. Today I woke up and I had so much energy. Also last night I was like cleaning the whole house and doing a bunch of stuff. And today I woke up and I was so excited to live. I was so excited to do everything I wanted to do. And I worked on my music and I did stuff around the house. And then I um, I went to the beach and meditated, brought Afro. And now we've been at the waterfall and just vibing. And now I'm making a podcast. And it's just like... I am having so much fun and I'm getting so much. I've posted on my OnlyFans. We made content, like all the things that I love to do in the vibration that I love. And for me, this is winning. This is God mode. This is like, I'm doing whatever brings me joy and nothing external is going to fuck with that. When you are in that mode, everything will happen for you. The universe will grow its consciousness through you and your higher self will be so excited because now you can grow your consciousness. Now you can go through the themes that it's set out for you in a way that is more pleasurable for you because it loves you. It is you. It is you, a part of you that like we are just a part of our soul that has come down to focus on this timeline because we can't hold all of that consciousness that our soul is. It is too big for us to contain in one physical body. So when we work with our higher self, when we work with our soul, everything beautiful comes from there. And then we come to the point where, have you heard of something called bringing heaven down to earth? What I realized recently is that this is a vibration. This is not some external external place like okay I want to go to heaven this is feeling the unconditional love that we realize that we have when we're in the spirit world here on earth and being able to create when you're in the spirit world anything you think of gets created instantaneously and when we're here in physical reality we have it happen more slowly but everything you think eventually gets created so most people focus on what do they focus on the things that they're worried about the things that they don't want to come true and then those slowly do come true but the reason why we have a gap between what we're thinking of and it appearing in the physical world here in the physical reality is because then in those moments we actually get to decide and grow our consciousness this is why we are choosing to come down here and have a physical experience because it's the best way to grow our consciousness. When you're in the spirit world and you think of, I want to live in a mansion or I live in a mansion, then suddenly you live in a mansion. There's the time period between you choosing that this is a a desire and you attaining the, the thing that you desire. That's where the growth happens. If things were just handed to you all the time, you wouldn't actually, one, get a check in and see if you actually want it. And then two, go through the growth process to be able to get it. Go through all the adventures in order to get it. I just imagine like if you watch like The Hobbit or some like epic tale where, you know, they go off on a journey. And in the beginning, he's just living his normal life in the Hobbit movie. And then like he goes through, he decides to go on this epic journey. Well, what if they just fast forwarded to the end of the movie where you're just like, and he, he's back home and everything's fine again. Like, it wouldn't be that fun. You would want to go through the whole adventure. So this is what I'm trying to download to you, that it's all one big adventure. You are unconditionally loved by your higher self, the universe, everything. And when you allow yourself in your physical mind to come into this awareness fully and embody it, you get to go into God mode and you get to create your most epic timeline in the most fun way possible. So, so many more juicy bits coming in the next couple episodes, as always. And I'm sending you guys lots of love, and I hope that you have an amazing day. Bye.